Uh, we live in an empire of codswallop. And I don't just mean the obsession with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. On the one hand, we have a public health emergency so serious that governments of supposedly free societies have the right to confine you to your country, your province, or even your flat. On the other hand, we have open borders so that anybody from Sudan or Afghanistan or who gives a stand has the right to land on England's southern shore and bypass all those health security protocols that you as a lawful citizen have to go through. These things are not compatible. The heavy hand of the biosecurity state for you, the right to roam where'er one pleases for Ahmed and Ibrahim. Public health regime for your Auntie Mabel, who gets to be walled up in some disease-ridden care home and then left to die alone because it would be grossly irresponsible to permit a loved one anywhere near her. But if some horny jihadist wants to start hitting on your 12-year-old in Maidstone or Dover, well, no one needs to see his vaccine passport. Right now, we are witnessing what an Australian viewer called a week or so back the controlled demolition of the free world. Every day, Western governments take basic rights from freeborn citizens while simultaneously surrendering their own powers as sovereign states to transnational cartels you can't vote out anywhere on earth. Meanwhile, as we reported yesterday, even as the government is advising you to cut out the sex, lest you spread the monkeypox, we keep the borders open for any heartwarming, plague-bearing, quote, asylum seeker who's minded to wander in. The monkeypox marches on. Can we have the special march of the monkeypox theme music, please? Oh, never mind. I'll do it myself. Bum, ba -ba -ba -bum. Monkeypox, monkey. Here are the top five monkeypox afflicted nations. I'll do it in reverse order, like the uh, chart countdown. Here it comes, the monkeypox uh, hit parade. Uh, straight in at number five, that's the big sound of the Dominion of Canada right there. And at number four, it's the old Federal Republic of Germany holding steady. Down at number three goes uh, Portugal. And uh, holding at number two, it's Spain. And that means for whatever it is now, the fifth, sixth week running, number one on the monkeypox hit parade. That's the United Kingdom with 190 cases. El País has an interesting report on this, quote, one of the main fears of health authorities is that the virus will become endemic in Europe as it already is in some African countries. That's uh, West Africa. As West Africa goes today, so apparently Western Europe goes tomorrow. Uh, this would mean that there would be outbreaks with relative frequency, either because the contagion in humans is not stopped or because it reaches animals from whom the virus repeatedly jumps to people, end quote. If you're thinking, wait a minute, didn't I read this story two years ago? No, you silly Billy. That was a completely different virus. Even if it does seem to involve all the same players here, the WHO, Dr. Fauci, the Wuhan Institute. Sir Keir Starmer, who wanted the UK to remain under the European Medicines Agency after Brexit, is said to be following the situation closely. So that whatever emergency measures the government decides to take, he can say it's not enough and we need to do even more of it. If you do decide to have sex before it's completely criminalized, make sure you wear a monkeypox safety mask. If you don't like that design, it also comes in a ginger growler. Yeah, the, I think I favor the ginger growler version. Eh, who doesn't like a ginger growler? Uh, we now live under permanent emergency. Since March 2020, authoritarian public policy cheered on by a groupthink media has made things worse in every respect. But like any old third-rate soap opera, oh, sorry about that, got a bit of ginger growler stuck in me. Uh, but like any old... Ugh, I don't know, it's uh, kind of hard to get out the old ginger growler. Um, but like any old uh, third-rate soap opera, the permanent emergency manages to come up with enough plot twists to keep it going as we stagger on getting poorer and poorer and ever more unfree. We are told by respected figures such as Andrew Neil. Is, is he coming back from his... Uh, 
that summer sabbatical he's been on now. Is he coming back from that soon? Uh, eminent figures such as Andrew Neil say it's entirely reasonable uh, to force people to undergo a medical procedure they don't need in order to be able to access his favourite Michelin restaurant on the Côte d'Azur or the most fashionable nude beach in Saint-Tropez. Just a uh, one little prick and you can take your ginger growler for a stroll with uh, President Macron. That's Monsieur et Madame Macron at left and a magnificent double-jabbed French derriere. Oh, don't tell me we've made it all blurry. Oh, it was such a part Gallic bottom. We should see the curves in all the... Uh, is that Ofcom? Ofcom say we can't show a Frenchman's bottom on television? What is the world coming to? To hell with Ofcom. I want more French bottoms on this show. Uh, in Her Majesty's Dominions, uh, the benefits of the vaccine came straight from the top. The thing is, is that it's, it is obviously difficult for people to, if they've never had a vaccine, because they ought to think about other people rather than themselves. Well, there are hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions, who did just that. They thought of people other than themselves, and some of them died, and others got too sick to be able to work. And now the same state that said, think of people other than yourself, uh, can't spare a minute to think about those English, Scots, Irish, Welsh, bereaved or injured by the vaccines. They did as they were told by the Queen and many others, uh, for other people, and now those other people aren't there for them. Let me know what you think of that, gbviews at gbnews.uk.